In this problem, we have to prove that for every event A, the probability of A is between 0 and 1. So before we do the proof, I'm going to briefly recall all three axioms of probability, since we will probably need some of these for this problem. So the first axiom says that uh, P of A is greater than or equal to 0 for all A, so for all events A. The second axiom says that the probability of the sample space is equal to 1. And the third axiom says if you have uh, some mutually exclusive events, so these, these all have to be mutually exclusive, then when you take the probability of the union of these events, you just get the sum of the probabilities. So P of A1 plus P of A2, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the proof. So proof. So we need to establish this inequality. So note by axiom one, right, the very first axiom, P of A is greater than or equal to zero. So we have P of A greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we've established that. We just now need to show that it's less than or equal to one. So the one, if you look at the axioms, appears in axiom two. So the idea here is to somehow involve the sample space. One way to do that is to say that the sample space is going to be everything in A or uh, everything in S that's not an A. Another way to think about it, it's everything that's uh, in S but not an A, and then everything that's an A. So you end up with just everything. So now we have P of S equals P of A union S set minus A. And this is going to be equal to P of A, is the key step, plus P of S set minus A. And this step here, this is, this is because A and S set minus A are mutually exclusive. So uh, axiom axiom three applies. So we're using, we're using axiom three here uh, with these two mutual exclusive sets to break up this union into two different uh, probabilities. And now uh, what we're trying to do uh, is we're trying to um, compare P of A to one. So we need to get rid of uh, this here. So this is greater than or equal to P of A plus zero, and this is this is by axiom one, because we can say this is greater than or equal to zero. So what do we have? So we have P of S, probability of the sample space, is greater than or equal to the probability of an event A. But we know something about the probability of the sample space, right? The probability of the sample space is one by axiom two. So that tells us, so thus, we have one greater than or equal to the probability of A. So the probability of A is less than or equal to one. So we've shown two things. We have shown that the probability of A is greater than or equal to zero, and that it's less than or equal to one. So thus, that's the same thing as saying it's less than or equal to one and greater than or equal to zero. And that completes our proof. So kind of a nice problem because um, we ended up using, if we go back, we ended up using, I think all the axioms, right? Let me get a different color here. So we used axiom one right here. And uh, then here we used uh, axiom three. 
and then here we used axiom one again, right? And uh, then here we used axiom two, right? So we did we did a lot, right? We did a lot to get to this, but hopefully you know you see how you would figure it out on your own because you know you get this piece right away. That's pretty easy, I think. Most people would, would be able to see that. I think the hard part is the one. And so, you know, you have to think, where does one come from? Well, where does it appear in the axioms? Well, it appears here, right? It appears in axiom two. So it tells you to somehow involve S, right? And then a natural thing to do is, you know, create some mutually exclusive sets so that you can apply axiom three to all of this. Really, really nice problem. Uh, yeah, I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there. Good luck and take care.